I am Lucy, I, I work for Youth Engagement for the Soccer Gakkai International and I'm a member of Yungo. Hello, I'm Martin Chungo. I'm Secretary General of the Interparliamentary Union, the global organization of parliaments. And we're here to have a heart to heart. My first question for you is, what COP outcome would be really meaningful to you? Um, for me, I think the most significant outcome that would be meaningful to me is the commitment and resolve of the global community represented here at COP to go back home and operationalize the loss and damage fund. Because this is something that has a potential to help countries, especially countries in the global south, cope with climate action. And climate action is something that is required in the face of the emergency, the climate emergency we're having today. So if we could come out of this meeting with global leaders and other partners, civil society, youth movement, parliamentarians, saying we're going home to take action on climate, this would be great. And we can start with the loss and damage fund, which is something that has been agreed to. And I see that there are a spate of pledges that are coming in uh, to fund that particular fund. So let's go ahead and do this. But let me turn to you, Lucy, and uh, ask you this question. When you think about the future, when you think about the future, how do you feel and why? Why do you feel that way? Thank you so much for your question. Um, I think when I think about the future, I, because I work a lot with young people, I'm actually filled with hope because young people, although they are, you know, experience anxiety or fear or, you know, about the future, they have hope. They're not giving up. You can, you know, you walk around this space, you see so many youth. I mean, a few years back, I hear that, you know, there was a handful of youth in this space, but now you can see youth are here. Even, as I said, even if they're feeling negativity, they really can transform it into a sense of personal responsibility or mission or whatever it can be to really create the future that they want to see and they're really engaging with in conversations they're reaching out to you know not just youth but other stakeholders to to find solutions that you know can be worked on together so I personally am filled with hope because I really see you know the future generations engaging in this issue more and more every year not just a cop but you know you go back home and they're all really thinking seriously sincerely about how they can contribute to their countries and their communities um, and yeah and this just it, it just makes me feel that we are heading in the right direction actually so now uh Again, I go to a question that I think I have answered, but I want to hear your perspective. Why are intergenerational conversations like this needed? I think for me, a big reason is that, you know, conversations and dialogues and heart to hearts like we're having now can bridge the divide, which can be sometimes created through, you know, thoughts or stereotypes or misrepresentation that we may hold on to about, you know, there's a kind of a a sense that young people feel all oh, the older generation are not doing enough or they've done this to destroy our planet and then from the other side you know there's accusation so it's very important to reach out to just have a conversation because at the end of the day we all are experiencing the changing climate we all are you know experience, experiencing it it doesn't have any age you know restrictions on, on on this crisis so we need to come together constructively um, and also, I think it's really important to build trust between generations too, to see that, you know, young people are capable, but they also sometimes lack confidence in going to, um, you know, their leaders. So it sometimes needs leaders to come to youth and not always youth just seeking out conversations all the time, but actually, you know, older generations seeking the experiences of youth because, you know, youth are very much kind of on the front lines of just change in general and yeah we can just just learn from each other and, and, and build trust and friendships and um, yeah hopefully come to some things where we can work together. Especially so as uh, climate change when it happens on us does not make a distinction between the older generation and the new generation. Yeah, we're in this together. I have one more question for you. If yeah okay. sure, by all means. What's your piece of advice for me? For you? Uh, I think my, the advice could also apply to me, and that is, we are here in COP28 
and we're making a lot of commitments, pledges and promises. Let's go out there and fulfill our promises. Every constituent in their own capacity. The young people, they have their part to play and let them go out there and play that part. The older generation that I think I represent should go out and do their part. So it's, my advice is action now and let's tamper the rhetoric. Let's act more. Yes, I will ask you the same question. What, what type of advice would you want to give me and anyone for that matter, any constituent represented here at the COP? I think my one would be around, um, let's not forget about the voices that are not so much represented in these spaces. Um, you know, we have you know, many youth here who are, tend to be you know, very engaged in political processes, who are generally full of hope and, and in taking action, but there are millions of young people outside of these spaces that do not get an opportunity for whatever reason to, to share, to, to be part of these things. And, and oftentimes, if we don't go seeking for those underrepresented voices, we don't hear from them. And I'm meeting many youth, especially from conflict areas, you know, their, their, their countries are engaged in conflict and, you know, sometimes their leaders are not coming here. So they're not part of the negotiations to, to make decisions for them. So I would say, yeah, for me, for everybody, let's try to seek those voices that are, are not being heard, that are not able to be in these spaces so that we can really bring everyone along together. Oh, that's great. I think I, I could not agree more with you. Uh, climate action needs to be more inclusive, more representative, so that they can be more legitimate, right? You have the need for more women to be at the table. You need, have the need for more young people to be at the table but also vulnerable, other vulnerable groups to be at the table because they are in a way, and it's been proven, that they are uh, grossly affected by climate change and we cannot take decisions that disregard their particular interests. So I agree with you that we need to be more inclusive. Let's promise to do it together. <laughs> together we will do it. Thank you so much.